The Atomos booth, and, uh, and Hi. who are you? Jeremy, CEO and founder, co-founder of Atomos. So how's the story with the Atomos? How's it been going and when you get the idea? <laughs> what do you think? When you get the idea? And, uh, it's awesome. It's awesome? It's awesome, yeah. When, when did we get the idea for a ProRes recorder? When we watched people struggle with ingesting and doing post-production on set with uh, MPEG codecs. The reason we called it Ninja and Samurai is because we're the assassins of MPEG and media cost of the camera. And, uh, and you just figured it out? You just made it happen in, over there in Australia? Yeah, yep. In Melbourne, we kind of worked away and there's a ninja. And uh, how is it going? Because I'm, 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 I'm thinking it's probably growing pretty good. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And a lot of people are very happy, right? Are you basically you're the standard for this kind of stuff? You're the we, we invented the market. Um, well, we're a technology company that just happened to be really good at video. Um, we're not a broadcast company, so we're solving problems in different ways, and we think we're doing all right. Is there something to do with FPGA technology, uh, crazy codec gurus working on super compression stuff? Something like that. Is this, Something is like that. that. In yeah. Your yeah. Like, it is. Uh, is there like a, a finding a way to make it work without using too much power? And yeah, it's jamming more into a device uh, than anyone else can. And super, the quality of the display is not easy. You need to get a good display, but you need to make it look. Good yeah, now good. we're going too far. I can't okay, talk to you about that. <laughs> no, no, What's no. What's going to happen in the future? Is there any Atomos with H.265 encoding so I can save some file space? That's the, one of the things I'd like. Have you been looking at my roadmap? Oh, is there a public <laughs> roadmap? No, there's not a public roadmap. Honestly, um, we're going everywhere. We're going deep and wide. We're going to go higher quality, lower quality. We're going to stream and code. It's it's a smorgasbord out there, and uh, our our products can really flexibly go to all different parts of the market. And no no camera is able to do 42 10 bit encoding in built in. So you have a you have a you need big to, advantage. You need to push there even more and more and more. And we do raw 240 from all these um, amazing Japanese cameras: the FS5, FS7, the. Beric MLT, the EVA one that's just come out, Canon C200. I mean, this this is killer technology. I don't want to get any secrets, right? But when are you launching a camera? <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, you could, right? You just need to put a lens, and then you have. A I camera. already have a camera. It's called a Sumo and a Shogun, and it sits on front of the in in the front of these Japanese awesome sensors. How are you going to get 8K to work? You need an 8K so feed, an 8K source. Right? Let's see. It's very soon the 8K stuff. Right? Let's see. Okay. Cool. So here the Atomos booth, and uh, I've seen you before. Yeah, my name's uh, my name's Dan, and I used to run a, uh, a small website called New Shooter. And uh, uh, now you are. What are you doing with Atomos? I'm I'm working for them, and I've uh, been cooking up some some rigs and things, sort of things that uh, I like, and uh, I'm just you know, trying to get the message out about how cool the products are. So right here we have an RX Zero. Yeah, RX Zero, brand new Sony RX Zero, which is a HD Intel only recording, but externally on the HDMI will give you 4K. That's awesome because this one doesn't encode internally in 4K, but no. right now you're getting 4K yep. 25. What yep. can you do? What kind of 4Ks does it do? Yeah, 4K up to 30, I think this one does. Um, and basically, inside this is, is uh, the sensor and, and the processing from the RX 105, which, uh, you know, I had previously uh, done some shooting with with a, uh, a, a Ninja uh, Flame recorder before, and I was really impressed with the image. So I knew already when they said it's the same sensor uh, and the same color processing that this is going to be good. The difference is the lens is different to the uh, RX105. This is a fixed uh, 24 millimeter, and it's an f/4, slightly slower. Is it means, wide? Yeah. I mean, look, it's, this is exactly what you get. So it's like. Um, a medium wide, right? It's pretty good wide, right? Yeah. It's the same wide as a, uh, and a Panasonic at 12 yeah. mm right? Yeah. So this is basically, uh, I think, the best action camera for the sort of for the money that you can currently get, and it's great that you know we can get fantastic 4K from it, um, and I can see this going in lots and lots of places. So vloggers, for instance, is it 420? Uh, it's 420 it's still. Um, you know, Sony haven't improved that yet, but. Um, you know, this is set up as a sort of the ultimate vlogging setup. You so, can switch it around. And you can switch it around. So I'm just gonna. Obviously, you could run it the other way around instead. You know, what you've got is. Uh, and you can also just have uh, just that and that, like a super compact run, right? Yep. 
Oh, yeah. yeah, so you don't you don't need the handles. It could just be this. Obviously, you know, if you're using it in a car, I think a lot of, but you know, I think those those car shows, the Top Gear type shows, they'll end up using a lot of these as well because they're perfectly suited. The quality is so high. Is there any way to stabilize that part? Well, I mean, you can put it on the gimbal. In fact, I know that there are gimbal manufacturers who are making gimbals. Well, I mean, even if you have a grip gimbal, you could have a grip gimbal. You have it, you know, you, you put it over here or here. I mean, you, you could even. I was thinking about it. You, you could have like three cameras. You could have one here, one here, and one here. If you want, you can have one going forwards, one going backwards at the same time. But how would you know. support three cameras? Well, at the moment, you'd have to have one of these to support. Yeah. Yeah. So you can walk around like that. But you never know. In the future, if there's a need for that sort of thing, I think it's something that Adamos would look at developing. But you know, we'll see what the market wants. You could, uh, you could do some uh, kind of like matrix effects if you have a, a range of these yeah. and uh, somehow some kind of way to, maybe it's a future roadmap kind of thing. Yeah. Can we walk around the, the Atomos booth here? And yeah, sure. Thing? Okay. So what else do you want there's to do? A, there's a new product right here, right? Uh, is this new? Yeah, so this is the Sumo 19M, which is a monitor-only version of the Sumo 19 that we launched at NAB. And I think a lot of your viewers will know this, this was the first production monitor recorder on the market. Um, and it, it does everything that one of our recorders does. In addition to that, it has uh, much larger screens. What is a production monitor? What does that mean? It means that you use it on set when you're filming. You can, you can use it um, to anywhere where you need to have accurate exposure and color information to make decisions about what you're shooting. So typically seen on movie sets, in, 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 in studios, on stands, you know, obviously it's not for running around. You can't run around and, and shoot a documentary with that. But for, for static interviews, a lot of the bigger TV stations would use, use this kind of monitor just for big set piece interviews where they're bringing the lights in, the directors and the producers, they prefer to look at a monitor like this. Is it very bright? So it's 1200 nits, which is incredibly bright for a production monitor. And, and that's the thing, you know, nobody else is making a, a monitor recorder that's 1200 nits. Um, this size? This size. And it has all our HDR functions as well. So it's an HDR capable, it has tons of colors. Is yeah. it a 10-bit monitor? Or? It's not, it's, it's, it's uh, 8 plus 2 FRC, because I know your readers know all about that sort of stuff. Maybe. So, okay. um, but it's, 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 it's 10-bit processing. Uh, which will give you, you know, what you're seeing here, which I hope you can agree is... What is you're saying now playing YouTube HDR, PQ HDR? So, another new thing that we've bought to... Well, let, me, let me finish up here one thing. So just a different... So, the, the, so what we did, this, this show is bringing out the 19M, which is a monitor-only version of this. So it looks the same, except that it doesn't record. And because it doesn't record, we also were able... We, we thought about... We, we reimagined our user interface. So you can see the user interface on this one is... You, you have to go into the sub menu for a lot of things. And we thought, well, okay, well, we now have some more real estate. So, what happens if we want to go straight into it? We can now go straight into menu settings. Um, so, it, this is replicating what you might see on a conventional monitor, but it's on a touch screen. And it's, it's the same brightness function and everything, otherwise? Um, it's the bright same, but it's like exactly the same screen. The other thing that this has that this doesn't have or this what, what this will have very soon is a switching function. Okay. So this has four HD SDI connectors input and you'll be able to have four HD uh, signals going in. and around on the, on the back or? Um, yeah, you can look around on the back. Or you might have to go let's do that. So there's all this SDI yeah. and, so and HDMI as well. So you can have, you'll be able to switch between the four in HD, not in 4K, in HD. Uh, the four SDI connections, and then the uh, HDMI uh, HD and uh, yeah, uh, but no, you, so you can only record one 4K, but you could record four HDs instead, or three, or two, or however many HDs you wanted. Um, the 19M doesn't have that; it only has two SDI connections because it's a monitor; it's not a recorder, um, and it has an HDMI. But you can. What are output. those? This is the heat vent. This is the coin. So, um, and this it, is a it's, 12, it's 1200 nits, it's going to get hot, so you have to cool it. But it's not too expensive, there is, right? No, so this is 2500 euro, and this is 2000 euro. So, anybody who's serious about making movies? Yeah, well, anybody. I mean, what, what, so what you've got here is 
you know, essentially this is now costing what some of these used to cost and the yeah, normal so ones used to cost. You know, and for that money you can have a, a 19 inch, yeah. And I think, you know, I think these will start showing up all over the place because they're, we're bringing technology that was previously unattainable by any, you know, literally people couldn't, they wanted a bit, they couldn't afford this stuff, but now they can afford it and they have great quality, they can make decisions about stuff on set, it's perfect. How would you say this compares with the small HD solution? Um, that, Is that the main competitor in that kind of, this? Well, we're a lot, we're, I would say that we're a hell of a lot cheaper than the small HD equivalent. Um, you know, I'll, I'll leave it for users and reviewers to decide what they prefer, but it's, I, I think the difference is that look, both monitors are capable of, of allowing you to make the decisions you need to make on set. Okay, but this one's a lot cheaper and it's, it's much more accessible to so many more people. Atomos is uh, the undisputed king of external recorders, right? Is that yeah, true? Yes, absolutely. Invented oh, yeah. the whole market and the leader and everything. I think, well, I don't mean, say we invented the external recorder, but you know, the, the affordable ProRes that was that's for wide adoption within the industry. Yeah, absolutely, we're the leader in that. And uh, uh, the Shogod Inferno. Is that the oh, the Ninja Assassin? One of them is the, the best partner to have with a GH5. So GH5. Um, actually, you would want a Ninja Inferno. So that's the one that does 4 to 2, 10 bits? Yeah, correct. And the, sh and the Shogun Inferno would do the same, but you're, you're paying for the SDI connections, which if you only have a GH5, you don't need. If you had, if you used other cameras as well as a GH5, you might want to look at a Shogun Inferno instead. And uh, how is the support of these? Uh, is there a lot of firmware updates and new functionality? Yeah, so there's, 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 there's three firmware updates. Uh, that come out. Uh, you know, obviously, like all other companies, we do bug fixes, but then we've introduced a raft of new features. Um, and I think we've already said that some of this stuff that we've done to change the UI here, you know, people have said, well, okay, well, I'd quite like to have it here. So now we're looking at, can we put direct access buttons onto this user interface for the older monitors? You know, and, and we will do that if, if, if users want it. The GH5 has an amazing HLG 30 frames per second. Can you do HLG 60 frames per second if you use a uh, um, Atomos? That I don't actually know the answer to. Never, t not tested that. Is there any yet. chance that the HDR kind of stuff? So okay, what this is? What the camera the, does? The, the, this okay. So what we're showing here, or what we're talking about here, is take it. What we've done is put the ability to attach a meta, the correct metadata flag for YouTube to recognize on upload onto anything recorded in log from a log camera that we recognize onto not just this, but we're going to give it in free firmware to all of these devices. So you'll be able to just literally shoot a clip with pretty much any log camera that comes up in this list. Yeah, any, any of the cameras that comes up in this list of log cameras, which is So there's a Panasonic log, Canon log, everybody has their own logs? Yeah, yeah. so we all, you know, obviously they're all slightly different. So we will then, you know, you have to tell the metadata that that's so for what example, it, in the Panasonic you shoot in VLive, okay. yeah. and then this one makes an HDR Correct. in real time. All right, let me, let, me, let me explain that. It doesn't make it a no. It, it, the file is still the same. It records a log file. But we have the metadata to be able for that file to be appropriately transformed by YouTube when you upload it so that it displays an HDR. But do you need to do post production or you wouldn't need to? For a single clip, you wouldn't need to. So you could just uh, shoot through the At Atomos equipment? and have something that might be actually better than trying to shoot HDR, HLG built well, in. Well, if you wanted to have camera. if you wanted to have a version to go back in grade for standard dynamic range as well, then yes, clearly, having the log image is the best image that most of these cameras can produce. You can't get a better image. So yeah, I would argue it's better to shoot log if you can, keep log as your base for everything, and then you know let us do the transformation. So the other thing that's gonna happen, I mean, at the moment, obviously, if you edit something, there's an issue with um, that we have no way to edit on this device, and therefore no way to attach metadata to an edited thing in you know on this device. But what you could do is edit everything in log, but grade it looking at one of these set in H Atom HDR. 
But when you export, it's still in log. Do you understand what I'm, I mean? So literally, keep everything in your timeline in log, but you preview it and make adjustments to one of these set in HDR. Nice. Okay, and then export that clip. And then play it into one of these using a you know a, 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 a converter box or something you know direct to this and record it again. So you get one generation loss, but then you would get an easy way to attach a metadata flag that was correct. And again, all you have to do is tell it which log it was looking at, just as though it was coming from the camera, because it doesn't know whether it's a camera or a computer connected to the end of this. So whatever you're playing in, you could then change that, and then it would have the correct metadata flag. And it, it would be the quickest way for somebody who didn't really want to learn you know, a, a finishing program, a, a, you know, a resolve or something like that, you know, they could do that. And uh, 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 am, I the, am I the only one that, that would like to have uh, H.265 encoding on this kind of device? Or is that like, uh, is there a couple of things maybe you can suggest to the... Well, for now, for now, for now, ProRes is the industry standard. And there's a good reason for that. It's a very, very good codec. It's, it's quality is you know, it is literally the industry standard, and there's a reason why a lot of TV productions and even some Hollywood productions use it. Um, but I think it'd be cool to be able to have a smaller file size that I just want to upload directly to YouTube. One kind of device, that, uh, one kind of thing that I think would be awesome for my kind of stuff is if I could record 4K 60 HDR, HD65, a small file size, and also have onboard video editing functionality. I want to be able to trim and join some clips. Well, you know, I mean, let me say, you're, you're not the first person to ask, to ask that question. I don't think that the current hardware is going to be doing that anytime soon because this is obviously this is hardware designed for the ProRes and TNX workflow but you know in the future who knows I, I certainly don't know so <laughs> you mean, um, but uh, you know I like, I like, look, I at we will say to all our users send us your suggestions we want to hear what it is that you want to see in products like this that's why I'm here now with Vatamos you know because I have I had ideas before joining Adamos about what I wanted to see in products like this and believe me the bright people that actually design and make these things um, are listening. So they are very cool guys, and they are listening to what users are saying. You know, there's a lot of people. A lot of the feedback we get from shows like this goes into product, and you see improvements. I mean, look, this this is a very simple example. This direct access to things, but you know, people actually specifically asked for this, and we thought, hey, well, look, we can do it. Let's do it, and then there it is, six months later. Because uh, when I was at CES and uh, Panasonic was talking about this the first time, I kept saying, come on, uh, if we can do H.265 in 6K, it can probably do H.265 in 4K, give us the option. And now the firmware 2.0 will do 4K 30 HLG H.265 only. There's not even the option. But, so I'm a little bit happy already, but uh, somehow they can do 4K 60 HLG. So maybe that's something that you would be able to get over there. Well, like I said, you know, we'll not information I'm privy to, okay. but uh, send your suggestions, <laughs> and I'm sure that uh, our tech team would, would you know, will look at whatever they can do cool. and what users genuinely want. So you expect in the next uh, few months you'll be quite busy with all kinds of stuff, right? What are you going to be doing? Well, making new stuff. That's all I can say. There's always new stuff. Come see us at NAB, or you know, maybe maybe even before that. There's, there, we are consistent, constantly turning out new stuff.